back with another YouTube video. Hello and welcome if you are new and today we do have another real time tutorial. So I did see that you guys prefer the real time video so I guess I'll make this a thing. But the videos are going to be longer so I hope that's not an issue because this is going to be hands down the longest video I've posted ever. Even though this video is longer, I'm still going to be talking throughout the video and giving you guys a step-by-step -step detailed tutorial so that you guys could see how I did these extendos. Now going right into the nail set, I am starting to remove the shine off of her natural nail plate and I am using a fine sanding band. Before I actually start to use my sanding band, I do turn it on and let it spin and kind of rub it on a hand file for a quick second so that when I'm getting up in the cuticle area with the sanding band, I do not cut my client. Even though it's a fine grit sanding band, you could still potentially cut your client and I've done it before. I do also like to use my sanding band in both directions and moving on, I'm starting to use my ball bit. Now this is a cuticle bit used to push back that skin, remove that skin that's in the cuticle area. And with this bit too, I do like to put my bit in reverse from time to time so that I can make sure I'm getting the entire surrounding of the nail. All of the skin that you guys see that's lifting up is gonna have to be removed with a cuticle trimmer, so I'll be doing that next. And when you're using any type of cuticle bit, you'll wanna hold it flat to the nail plate because we need all of that that's gonna come up. If you start to hold it as if you're sealing the cuticle area kind of at like an angle, it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. And when I first started doing nails, I really wanted to use cuticle bits, but I thought I just wasn't using them right or the ones I got didn't work. And it was all about the angle I was holding my file at. Before I start to trim the cuticle area, I am going to start to brush all of the skin back. I am using this dust brush that I got from Amazon and they do come in really large packs. So I'll leave that down below. But I like to do this to further push any skin back if needed. And right here, I am starting to trim the cuticle very, very slowly. I won't be doing this to all the fingers, only the fingers that need it. So what helps a lot is that cuticle bit because it pretty much turns all the dead skin kind of white. So it's really, really easy to see where you have to cut. And I'm glad that my camera is nice and clear so that you guys could see that here. Moving on, I did already apply the nail tips and we're not cutting these. These nail tips are XXL coffin nail tips. I did get them from Amazon. I will link them down below. And unfortunately, I didn't have any scissors. So I'm using these straight toenail clippers to go ahead and kind of nip the side. I could have cut a little bit more of the nail tip. That would have made things a little faster, but it's been a minute since I did stiletto, especially this long. So I was kind of taking precaution. So right here, you guys are going to see me kind of bounce around between what I was doing. At first, I was going to go right into shaping the nail tips. But in my opinion, it is much easier to see the shape of the nail if the nails are white. So I am going to lightly kind of file the surface of the nail tip so that we could etch it, get it white. And so that when I'm filing, I could actually see the shape. You could probably still see it even if it was clear. But like I said, I prefer for it to be white. Now for the shaping, I am using my 80-80 grit files. I did get these from Amazon. And when you're shaping nails this long, you definitely need to make sure that you get 80-80 grit. You need the most coarse they have. Anyway, when I'm filing these nails, I'm hoping that you guys can see what I'm doing. I am lightly filing underneath the nail and I'm using my fingers to hold the nail tip in place because these are super long and they're not too flimsy, but I just don't want to hurt her as I'm working. Me personally, I do prefer a super, super sharp stiletto. So to make sure that these are nice and sharp, I am going to keep my focus towards the free edge. 
I'm mainly following the free edge. Of course, I'm following the rest of the nail so that everything looks even. But we don't need the whole nail to be skinny. If the whole nail is skinny, of course, it's going to break. We still want like a wide base with a really narrow end. Also, when I'm doing nails, I try not to file aggressively because on the other end, that does not feel good. I've definitely had my nails done plenty of times where I felt like they were shaping really, really hard. And it would either be uncomfortable or it would kind of hurt. So I do feel like because I was keeping that in mind as well, it could have possibly taken me just a little longer to shape these. But nonetheless, I still love how they came out. And I'm making sure that I'm consistently going back and forth on each side of the nail to make sure that everything is even. This is how the stiletto is looking so far. Super, super sharp like I like it. And moving on, I am going to go to the next finger. I'm hoping that this is much clearer to see what I'm doing. I feel like because the pinky is so little, all you see is me wrapping my fingers around the nail. But moving on, same thing here. I am making sure that I'm filing both sides for the same amount of time so that I can make sure that these nails are even. There's been times in the past where I was not doing this and I'll turn her hand around and one side is way more narrow than the other. So we want to prevent that. I'm still holding the entire nail when I'm shaping. Like I said earlier, I don't want to hurt my client and I don't want the nail to be moving everywhere as I'm working with it. So for the opposite side, I do like to hold the nail tip. Remember I stated that I am filing lightly underneath the nail as well to bring the whole thing in. I'm not directly on the sidewall. It may look like it, but my file is a lightly tilted underneath the nail. So we can bring everything together and it's not just looking all straight. Once again, for the free edge of the nail, I mainly focus there when it comes to getting the nails really, really sharp. You don't want to file both of the side walls down until the nails are sharp. It's going to give you a different look. And these are extra, extra long. So like I said earlier, we still need that base to be wide because we need something to support the entire nail. This is actually the longest set of nails I've did in a minute. Normally, when I use those extra, extra long nail tips, I never let them get the whole nail tip. I always feel like it would take too long. But this actually did not take as long as I thought. I actually didn't upcharge her too much because of the length, because I wasn't too sure how they were going to look, which that's what I get for doubting myself, because they came out bomb. And I was looking at them like, dang, I kind of undercharged her. So in total, she paid one, I'm gonna say 185. I probably would have charged her about 210 for these, just for the length, but it was no big deal. Now that I know I could do nails this length, even though I've been with doing nails this length, it's been a minute, but now since I've been reassured, I'm definitely gonna put this length back up on my website. Cause at the moment, this is definitely not a link that's available at all. And after I posted these, I know there's going to be other girls that are going to be interested in getting their nails this long. So that's one thing about posting something that you don't normally do. You might post it and then get a bunch of people that really like it and you would have never expected it.
moving on to prepping these nails i am going to clean off her nail plates using an alcohol pad i do prefer to use alcohol pad because not only does it get all the dust off it's also going to dehydrate the nails when the alcohol starts to dry you'll definitely notice because they'll look exactly how they looked before you apply the alcohol once all of the nails look like this i am going to go in with a very thin coat of my young nails protein bond and then one coat of my no lift primer in my previous video, people were asking me what's the brand of the No Lift Primer. The brand is actually No Lift. So if you go on Amazon and search up No Lift Primer, it should be the first and probably only brand that pops up because that's the actual name of the product. Alright y'all, so it is now time for the acrylic application. I was super excited about this and we are using a custom color. I know you guys are probably sick and tired of me using these custom colors. But she wanted a yellow that wasn't too bright, wasn't really dark and also glowed in the dark. So I did mix a couple colors, some white, some clear, some glow powder to achieve this look. But right now I'm currently applying a very small bead of acrylic powder to the natural nail. And afterwards I'm going to start to apply my acrylic. I feel like with applying that small clear bead, I'm able to get the nails to last for a really long time. And I'm also protecting the primer that I already placed there. We don't want to accidentally wash it away with monomer. These nails are super long. So for my first bead, I did pick up a pretty large bead. I'm making sure that all of my acrylic powder is on top of the nail. And using the end of my brush, I'm lightly trying to bring this down to the free edge as much as possible before I actually start to wipe this down. Now, I don't normally do this, but I did feel like this would be the fastest way, making sure that the side walls are nice and snugged, and then kind of pulling the acrylic powder towards the free edge so that when I start to wipe, the only thing I have to do is make sure that this is even. I'm also making sure that there's no acrylic powder underneath the nail. We don't want that because I don't want to have to do extra filing later. So you guys are going to see me remove anything that falls underneath and start to remove a little bit of the acrylic powder that's on the free edge since these are stiletto. The new color that I'm using today is from Valentino. This is their cover color perfect nude. For the most part, I really only use their cover colors unless I'm running low, but I do prefer to use Valentino. Moving on, I'm making sure that this bead is sidewall to sidewall before I go to the bottom of the bead and start to lightly blend this down. So this first bead is pretty much the bead that's going to start off my ombre and then of course I do have to do the other beads like the cuticle bead and encapsulate. My main focus is making sure that all that acrylic powder is sidewall to sidewall before I move on. This way we don't have to go back and do extra steps due to acrylic powder being missing in a couple areas. The cuticle bead i did want to zoom in a little bit so that you guys could see how close i place it to the cuticle area while still placing it not directly on top so i did place it a little bit away from it and i'm starting to use the tip of my brush to allow the acrylic powder to flow into the entire area and then i could use my brush to wipe everything down and make sure that i get the entire nail just as before, you do want to make sure that the acrylic powder is sidewall to sidewall. I am loving how this ombre is coming out, and I missed my Valentino acrylic powder. I've been telling y'all I was using me a secret. I was using stuff I was mixing, and I was not feeling it at all. So I also did add one more bead of acrylic powder directly on where the ombre started. I did dry this bead out just a little bit, and after placing it, I'm going to make sure just like before that everything is sidewall to sidewall and then start to lightly blend this down towards the free edge since these nails are ombre we will have to encapsulate them in clear acrylic powder we do want to make sure that the ombre we created isn't going to get messed up when we start to file but i don't want these nails to be thick the nails only have to be thicker in the apex area but i really did not want all these nails to be thick and out of all these nails, I could say that the pinky was a little thicker, but we are going to later file this down. 
just like with the first bead I picked up, I am going to make sure that all that acrylic powder is on top. And I really don't need this acrylic powder to go all the way to the free edge. I really just want to make sure that this stays in the apex area. So after placing it, I did immediately start to blend from the bottom of the bead. So right now I am currently just wiping along the entire nail, making sure that I'm going from sidewall to sidewall to make sure that everything is really smooth. I know I said this already, but I love how the ombre looks and I really like this color combination with this nude. So moving on, I am adding that cuticle bead. This bead is much, much smaller than the last one. I had already made that first bead too, too big. So I really didn't want to use too much acrylic powder in the cuticle area, especially because it was not needed. Moving on to the next finger, just like before, I am going to apply a very small bead of clear acrylic to the natural nail before I start my ombre. Now, when I'm doing nails, I do try my hardest to have the same method with each nail, but you guys are going to see in this application, I didn't do every finger different, but there were little things that was different about each finger due to either how much acrylic powder I was using or how the nail turned out before I encapsulated. So right here, just like before I picked up a larger bead, you do want to make sure that the top of the bead is flat to the nail so that when we create our ombre, it's very easy for us to blend down and it's nice and seamless. Using the tip of my brush, I'm still pulling that acrylic powder down. And once I feel like I've pulled it enough, I am going to start to lightly wipe going across the entire nail. Now, for a second here, I thought that this bead was not going to make it to the free edge. And I'm glad I did because I did not have to go back and add any extra acrylic powder. But I did also kind of wipe the sidewalls of the nail so that everything was nice and snugged. And normally I don't do that because I don't like when the nail tip shows. So after I do that, I do go back and start to wipe down the nail so that that acrylic powder could cover any nail tip that may be visible. The brush is also slightly tilted as I'm doing that so that I'm not directly wiping down the sidewall because like I said, I think it looks real funny and it just doesn't look as clean when you could clearly see a white or a clear nail tip underneath the acrylic powder. So you guys see how seamless this ombre is going to turn out. There's no harsh yellow line. And if you do see a little bit of a harsh yellow line, it's going to be no longer visible when I start to apply that cuticle bead. And if needed, I'll apply one more bead where it ombre, but not on all the nails. I don't always do that. Only if I feel like I did not add enough product. I'm currently doing the cuticle application. I do feel like I picked up less acrylic powder when it came to doing the ombre this time. So the nail was a little thin. So I actually went in with another cuticle bead to one, make sure I removed that harsh line that's right there. And to make sure that this wasn't too thin before I started to encapsulate. Right here, I was starting to press down on the acrylic that was closest to the skin. And I seen this on TikTok and I only did this because I felt like there was a little, little tiny space between the acrylic powder and how close I could really get the acrylic powder. So because of that, I did start to press down on it so it would push back because I knew there wasn't going to be a bead small enough for me to put it right there without just completely flooding the cuticle area. Now that the ombre is done and the nail is nice and smooth, I did check from the side wall before I encapsulated. I did this with all the nails. I do like to make sure that the apex isn't already super thick because if that's the case, I'm really only going to encapsulate the bottom and just put a really tiny bead of acrylic in the cuticle area. Even though this was a extendo video, I did want this tutorial to be for beginners. I wanted this tutorial to be very, very specific. And since we do have some extra time because these nails are so long, I did want to talk to you guys about slow months. 
Recently, I've seen a lot of posts about it being very slow for a lot of service providers. And I'm not only talking about nails, hair, lashes. And I do feel like, come on, New Year's just passed. Christmas just passed. You know, all those holidays were back to back. We got October, which is Halloween. We got Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. It's a lot of back to back. And with people not being able to afford things how they used to due to COVID and the economy, food prices going up, everything is just currently going up right now. And I do feel like that's why within the beauty industry, we might be seeing a little bit of a decline in clientele, but I'm sure it's just for now. And yeah, I'm not going to lie. Even for me, I did feel like at first I was like, dang, this month is a little slow. But all because you don't get booked up once you drop your website, it doesn't mean you're not going to get booked. I do feel like for me, as the month of January was continuing to pass, I was just getting the bookings as the days were coming. Like maybe I checked Monday and it said I only had three appointments for the week. And then I checked Tuesday morning and the whole week is booked. Like you really just never know. So I definitely would not get discouraged if you are experiencing a little bit of a decline in clientele or you feel like it's hard to build clientele right now. If you are a beginner nail tech and you're looking more into building a strong clientele, I did have a video that I posted about a year ago and I still use those same tips. If you're struggling, I definitely recommend just giving your clients a different experience that they can't really get anywhere else. So they'll always want to come back to you. I've been doing nails for four years now, so for the most part, I have a pretty stable clientele because like I said, I've been doing nails for a minute, so I already have a good amount of regulars. So even if it's a really, really slow month for me, I already know the people that I'm going to see that month, and I get lucky if, of course, I get other clientele. But I'm definitely not going to sit here and act like I'm always booked all the time. There are slow months for me too. And I just feel like for people in the beauty industry or entrepreneurs, period, there's always going to be high months, low months, good months, bad months. So you do want to be prepared. So I'm currently on my third nail and right now I'm starting to clean up the cuticle area. When you're doing acrylic nails, you definitely want to make sure that there's no product touching the skin because that will cause lifting and I'm going to need her nails to stay on for at least four weeks. Also, if you've made it to this part of the video, feel free to comment down below some little, let's do yellow hearts this time. I was filling out with the red hearts last time, but if you made it to this part, Drop down below some little yellow hearts. I know this video is longer, so you guys can let me know down below. Are you guys okay with the longer videos? Because I'm okay with them, and I'm okay with going back to like super, super, super detailed tutorials because I'm seeing that you guys are filling them.
I know you guys can't see, but my client was actually taking a little nap as I was doing her nails, which was not an issue because her hand was pretty much just dead and it was working with me the whole time. I think my client said she had got off of work at 4 and her appointment was at 10.30. So I was honestly happy that she even still came because there are some people that would have been like, hmm, I don't even need my nails done. I'm tired. So I do really appreciate that she still came, even though she had a really long day at work the previous day. Finally, moving on from that super long application, we are starting to seal the cuticle area. And I skipped the pinky because it looked like I was just covering the whole finger. But moving on, I'm using this drill bit that I got from Amazon. I actually do like this bit more than the 5-in-1 bit, but I do recommend the 5-in-1 bit if you're a beginner and you need something with a little more safety because you'll cut somebody with this bit if you're not careful. Sealing the cuticle area is making sure that the acrylic powder that's closest to the skin look like it's actually coming from the nails matrix. So that's why we do this and we also do this to prevent lifting. I'm able to keep my client's nails on for four weeks and longer, which they should not do, but sometimes they do. And I'm pretty positive that it's because of my prep and it's also because I make sure that the entire nail is sealed before moving on.
Now, I know I keep saying this, but I'm going to say it again. You do want to make sure that you are being careful. And I know y'all can't actually see me when I'm doing the nails, but sometimes my face do be a little bit pressed up against them nails to make sure that I'm in the proper place. I'm not too close to the skin because cutting the client is not only going to, of course, kind of mess with the trust your client has for you. That's one. And two, it's going to slow the appointment down because now you have to make sure her finger does not continue to bleed. Once I'm finished with shaping the cuticle area, we are going to start to attack those side walls. I am going back in with my 8080 grit hand file to make sure that I get these nails nice and sharp. So I am first going to file the side walls of these nails. I'm also going to file underneath the nail to remove any clear nail tip that may be visible. And I'm also going to be filing the surface of these nails as well. Make sure that you're looking on the side walls from a different angle, from multiple angles if you need to, just to make sure that the nails look right to you, to your client, and that the apex is there. I wanted these nails to look like some like pro magazine nails when the stiletto nails just look so perfect. The free edge is really thin, the apex isn't too too high, and the nails are just overall smooth and clean. So that was the look I was going for today with these extendos. So I am going to be making sure that I'm checking the side walls like I told you guys earlier. And I'm also going to make sure that the apex isn't too high. Using your hand file is not something that is required to file on top of the nail. Now, I personally like to do this to make sure that the entire nail is smooth. This is just how I like to do it. Everybody has a different method. I'm sure if you watch other YouTube channels, everybody does something a little different, which is okay. But for me, this is what I like to do once I'm finished with sealing the cuticle area. And I did have to back my phone up just a little bit. It was too close. So I am continuing to file the side walls and I'll be doing this to the other nail. I know you guys can kind of see the thumb from this angle. I am so happy about that thumb and I'm so happy about it because it's not crazy thick. I've told you guys, I feel like I used to make my nails so thick. I don't think anybody really noticed because they were nice, but I definitely was wasting product because you don't need to make the whole nail so thick.
even though I did not cut the nail tips, I did want to go back and make sure that all the nails were the same length because that looks funny if it's not, of course. And just like with the nail tips when I was first shaping them, I am focusing on the free edge of the nail, going back and forth on each side when it comes to shaping it so that I can make sure this is as sharp as possible. This was the exact look I was going for. You guys are going to see me kind of start to file the sidewalls just a little bit before moving on. And now I'll be applying some cuticle oil to all of the nails and then using this 80 grit buffer to remove all of those really fine scratches that was caused from the 80 grit file. Me personally, I do like the bigger buffer blocks and especially with nails this long, they did really come in handy. Now I get them from the nail supply store that's up the street and then I also get them from Amazon so I am going to leave them down below. They're the same thing, probably the same vendor and everything. So I am going to link down below the Amazon ones. All right, y'all, so we are almost finished with these nails. The last step we have to do is the design. So I'm currently using my Zule Bling Glue to add my rhinestones. And for the butterfly charms, I'm gonna be using McCart's Diamond Gel. The crystals I'm using today are Serenity Crystals and Priosta Crystals. They are from Blue Street Crystal. Now, they're more expensive than rhinestones on Amazon, of course, but this is another reason why you'll be able to upcharge your clients and make some more profit from using the real crystals. Thank you. 
I do also have a video on crystals because sometimes when it comes to the sizing of the crystals, you can't really see how big they are on the website. It just gives you a bunch of numbers. So because of this, I did make a separate video talking about the rhinestones and actually showing you guys the different sizes. I'm also using a wax stick to pick up all of my stones and I'm gonna use the wax stick to pick up the butterflies too. After I place the diamond gel and place the butterfly in the diamond gel, you do have to cure it. So I'm just gonna flash cure it real quick. Honestly, just to get the butterfly to stay for a quick second and then afterwards, when I'm finished with all the nails, that's when I'm gonna allow it to completely cure. But we don't have time to be sitting here waiting for every butterfly to cure. So today my client said she wanted her nails to be extra but not too extra because she already feels like they're really long so she doesn't have to do too much when it comes to designs. So I did keep it minimum while still kind of doing the most but in a sense where it works for the both of us. For the next finger I am going in with some cuticle stones and for the middle finger I decided to just add two butterflies because I tried to add one butterfly charm but it really just it didn't fit with the set. Lastly, I wanted to do some stone placement and I was going to do like a really detailed kind of stone placement, but she already said she didn't want to do too, too much. So I kept it real simple, but they still made a statement. I still love how the nails came out. I feel like they looked way better glossy than matte. So I am excited about showing you guys the top coat and I applied a little bit of stones to the thumb, but I really was not too sure to, what to do. So I think I just put a triangle of stones near the cuticle area, if you guys could imagine that.
Once I'm finished with the nails, I am going to be top coating them. And for the top coat, I pretty much top coat around everything. There's no reason why I don't leave that part in the video. I just be moving my phone like, all right, I don't feel like recording. Let me just top coat the nails, take my pictures. But I am going to start to leave the top coating in the video because I literally just take a little bit of gel polish and start to go all the way around the stones. For the top coat today, I am using a non-wipe top coat from D&D. It's super glossy and I am going to be just going around the rhinestones because I didn't already top coat the nails. And you want to make sure, you really want to make sure that you don't get any top coat on top of the rhinestones, especially not no serenities because they are not going to shine the same if you do that. So you do want to be very careful as you're going around the stones. And I'm going to show you how to find a look. They did glow in the dark. And I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video because I really enjoyed making it. And feel free to comment down below what you would like to see next. And I'm going to see you in my next video.